Guys, welcome back to Cryptech Mining. Today, I just want to go over the difference between a surf power supply and an ATX power supply. So a lot of you guys already know what an ATX power supply is, but this one here is a 1600 watt, 80 plus titanium power supply. It comes with all the normal cores that you need to power motherboards, hard drives, etc. Now, guys, one of the features of this power supply is, is that it has a zero RPM fan mode at low to medium loads. So that's definitely a benefit for me because obviously I don't like hearing too many fan noises, but, um, you know, each to their own. Okay, guys, so now then, this is a server power supply. So, guys, this comes in different shapes and sizes. Um, obviously, I picked up this one here from Parallel Miner. This is a 2400-watt, 94% efficiency power supply. Uh, you probably get a better look there. Yeah, so there you go. So, we're going to run 94% of 2400 watts at 100% of the time and not lose any efficiency. So, that these, these power supplies can be good. And I can definitely recommend them if you are running a rig because obviously these are cheap and they can run really well um, and the power efficiency is great so guys now the only thing that i don't like about this one here is that look at these fans so obviously there's two fans in this they're very small okay so when this thing heats up these fans sound like jet engines now i was running this thing here at about 80 percent efficiency when i was running it on my cards i was running this at about 2000 watts um, and this was very, very loud on my rig. It was okay for the first five or six weeks, but then it just got too loud for me, so I ended up swapping back over to the ATX power supplies. Guys, let's have a look at the other features of this. So as you can see here, we have two breakouts. Now, this can hold a lot of SATA ports, as where this ATX one here, I believe, only has nine. has nine ports on the FPCIE. Now, this here, as you can see, this is a breakout board. This is just one of them. This here holds four, eight... 12 16 slots on this one board okay now then the way this works is obviously you just plug it on in the back there um and you can feed that so you want to go 1200 watts each side so you say maybe a thousand watts each side so you can keep that efficiency i'll just get these on for you guys so you can have a look so they just slide in just like that very easy same as the other one and just clicks on in and bang. So another thing you need to keep in mind with this is that you won't be able to obviously secure this very well. You don't have to make your own little bracket or something for it. But as you can see, here's your power button. This turns it on and off. This controls both breakout boards, okay? Now, as you can... With this here, sorry, you can see that we have a total of 32 PCIe slots, okay? Now, each one of these are rated to 300 watts, although you won't be using that in a complete sense. Um, it can definitely assist you with, uh, obviously, not overheating those wires. Okay, so now let's look at the pros of this. So, I was able to pick up this power supply for $210 US. Now then, let's go over some pros and cons. So, the pros of this is that it, they're cheap to purchase and they have a high wattage efficiency, designed to run 24-7, and obviously holds way more PCIe power slots than what you could possibly need for a small rig. Now, the cons of this is that the fans can be very loud, um, and obviously, you only get a 30-day warranty. But, I mean, look, guys, I mean, I, I only reason I chose not to use this was because the fans were very loud. Um, and I, I'm in my uh, room here quite often, and the fans were just uh, getting on my nerves. So that's why I swapped out for ATX. But, I mean, that's a decision for you, yourself, for you guys to make. But let's go over the pros and cons now of this ATX power supply. So... We have quiet fans on this, or if no fans. It has a high wattage and efficiency, not as good as a server power supply. It has a power cut, cut off if it gets overloaded, and it comes with a three-year warranty compared to a 30-day warranty. Now, the cons of this is that it's not as efficient as a server power supply, as it only can go up to 80%. Uh, obviously, it has less PCIe connectors, and is not designed to run like a server power supply 24-7. But that is literally all the difference is between these. So the biggest difference is the price. Obviously, you're gonna. I paid. I think if you were to convert this to US, I probably paid about six hundred dollars for this ATX sixteen hundred watt power supply, as where I paid two hundred and ten dollars US for the server power supply. So guys, it's a matter for yourselves and which ones you want to pick in regards to powering your rig. Whether you want to go one and one, or if you just if you like me and you don't like the loud noises of the little fans on the surf power supply, I'm going to keep going for the ATX power supplies. But that's just my own decision. So, guys, I'm just going to show you guys super quick where I was keeping, where I had these power supplies and, and the difference that it made to my machine. So, let's head over there and I'll show you guys the difference and what I had to do to get this one here on there. 
uh, compared to having a couple of the server power supplies. So guys, I think I should also mention that I had to have running, I was running three of these power supplies on my rig, but let's head over there, I'll show you what I mean and the difference. So this is the big rig here, I had the three power supplies on here, and the server power supplies, sorry, and these ones that are on here now, I have five ATX power supplies powering all these cars, so it's five to three, so it's $210 for each one of those server power supplies, as where these ones by five are about 600 US dollars. Um, and obviously, as you can tell, the price added up very quickly, switching it to ATX, guys. So as I said, that's a matter for yourself and how you want to build your rig and how you want it to run, but these are good. They are, have great efficiency, and I can highly recommend them if you don't mind putting up with the noise of those little fans. Okay, guys, so we went over the differences between the server power supply and the ATX power supply. I hope I didn't miss anything. Uh, if I did, please let me know in the comments. I just want to thank you guys for watching. I hope I was able to explain this well. Um, and hopefully it helps you pick which one you'd like to use for your own mining rig when you get to it. But peace out, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Be safe.